Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna move this tab over here. I think you can still see me. I have two screens going on right here. Um, okay, Washington families, good morning. Happy Wednesday. I am uh, I am your proud principal, Ms. Verdusco, here at Washington Elementary School, and I welcome you to our reopening parent information meeting. We are hosting two meetings today, one now and another one this evening at 5 p.m. So you're welcome to join us in the evening as well. We are recording this meeting. Uh, with us today is our awesome assistant principal, Dr. Morales, and our awesome instructional lead, Mrs. Coca. They will be assisting us with the chat so that we are able to answer any questions that you might have throughout the presentation. Um, if you can please just ensure that you are muted so that we are able to, um, to uh, so that everyone can clearly hear the, the presentation. And at the same time, we are going, we are going to ask that um, if you can give us an opportunity to go through the entire presentation. And I promise you parents, at the end, we're going to have a, uh, a session for questions and answers. So throughout the presentation, if you have a question regarding what we are presenting, you can either put it in the chat or you can make a note of it and we will make sure that we answer your questions uh, before the end of the meeting. We wanna make sure every parent leaves the meeting understanding this presentation. So, buenos, buenos dias, familias de Washington. Estamos muy contentos de estar aquí con ustedes. Esta presentación va a ser en inglés y en español. Tenemos dos juntas hoy, ahorita, y luego a las cinco de la tarde. Es bienvenido de acompañarnos también en la tarde. Estamos grabando esta reunión. Y tenemos con nosotros a nuestro asistente director, Dr. Morales, y a nuestra líder de instrucción, Mrs. Coca, que nos van a estar ayudando también a contestar preguntas en el chat. Les pedimos amablemente que por favor apaguen su micrófono para que todos puedan escuchar la información muy bien. Y también les pedimos, les pedimos de favor que, que nos dé la oportunidad de completar la presentación y al final vamos a tener espacio para contestar todas las preguntas que usted tenga. Uh, así que apunte sus preguntas o póngalos en el chat y nosotros vamos a contestar las preguntas. Esa es nuestra meta, de que usted se vaya de esta reunión entendiendo uh, cuáles son nuestros planes de reapertura de nuestra escuela. We are going to start with a video. The video is, is um, it is 12 minutes long, but it is very important that you see this video. And a lot of the, the, a lot of the uh, talking points in the video, we will discuss further in the presentation. The video, we're going to show it in English, parents. It is 12 minutes long, but we also have it in Spanish. We will share both videos with our families later on um, during the week. So it is available in English and Spanish, but right now for the, for the sake of time, we're only going to show it in English. Vamos a comenzar con un video que grabamos para nuestros padres. El video lo vamos a enseñar ahorita es 12 minutos y lo vamos a enseñar en inglés, pero tenemos también el video en español. Así que lo que vamos a hacer es, durante la semana vamos a compartir estos dos videos en inglés y en español con ustedes en nuestras redes sociales y en nuestra página de web. No se preocupe, si usted no, no habla o entiende el inglés, vamos a compartir el video en español con ustedes también esta semana. So without further ado, I hope the volume is good. I have to say we recorded the video on Monday and there was a lot of wind. So we added subtitles to the video, okay? But please forgive us the day with the weather. I, we felt like a reporter uh, reporting on a tornado or something, but there was a lot of wind. But we did add subtitles to the, uh, to the video. Uh, durante el video que lo grabamos el lunes, había mucho viento el lunes con la lluvia, pero agregamos 
subtítulos para que también puedan leer um, de lo, la, la información. So here we go. We are starting with a video. I am going to share my tab. And here we go. Hello, Washington families. I am your proud principal, Ms. Verdusco, and this is our wonderful Mr. Bobcat. I hope this finds all of you doing very well and staying safe. Thank you very much for all the hard work you've put in your children's education during distance learning. We truly appreciate your support. We are very excited to have our students return to campus safely very soon. These are the news we have been preparing for in months. As we prepare for our return date, we want to assure you that we have been working diligently to welcome our students and staff to a clean campus, organized to keep a safe environment for everyone. I am incredibly grateful to our support staff as well as our cleaning staff who have been working tirelessly to ensure that our school is ready for when our students and staff return. When your child returns to school, some things are going to look a little different, but we will still maintain a positive and safe school culture and ensure that our students are happily learning at school. Safety of our students and staff is our first priority. Prior to students and staff returning, our school will have been deep cleaned and completely disinfected. We will follow all necessary safety precautions. Cleaning schedules will be in place to ensure that classrooms, restrooms, staff lounge, offices, and all high touch common areas are cleaned regularly and disinfected daily. All HVAC, also known as heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, have been designated with MERV 13 filters. These are the most efficient filters commonly available for HVAC systems. MERV 13 filters have been installed in every classroom and the air in the classrooms will be programmed to be filtered throughout the day. Let's talk about screening our children at home first. Please do not send your child to school if he or she has any COVID-like symptoms. Every morning, parents will be asked to screen their children for possible symptoms of COVID-19 before the start of the school. You will be provided with written procedures on how to screen your child. Here are some helpful tips on how you can prepare your child before he or she returns to school. Teach them how to wash their hands as well as sanitize their hands frequently. Keep physical distance from other students. Always wear a face mask and also avoid sharing objects with other students, including water bottles, devices, supplies, and books. In terms of the COVID-19 protocol for symptomatic students, staff will be trained on administering the COVID-19 protocol for symptomatic students at school. Clear steps will be followed if staff come across symptomatic students.
one of the things that will be different is how students enter the school and how they leave the school. For arrival, we will have two entrance gates, a walk-up and a drive-up gate. Each entry point will have clear signs and markings to support six feet of social distancing. Our walk-up gate will be by the Harris Gate. All students who walk to school will be required to enter through this entrance. Our drive-up gate will be in front of our school on Pine Street. Only students who get dropped off by car will be required to enter through this gate. There will be a screening function with staff members at each entrance. Um, Disculpe, mis verduzcos, casi no se puede escuchar el video. Bobcat families, this is our hand washing station. Uh, it is really important for students and staff to wash their hands throughout this COVID. We have hand washing stations throughout our campus, and students will be required to wash their hands in the morning when they enter the campus and after every break when they are outside. Washing our hands is a great way to kill germs and keep each other safe and healthy. Okay. All right, Bobcat families, uh, students will be encouraged to bring their own water bottles to school every day. They will not be able to drink out of the water fountain. However, we have water filling stations and students will be able to fill up as much as they need. There's an example of water. And we wanna make sure that if there is a line, students are waiting our marked area that is, that is six feet apart. Now we are entering the classroom, and this is what your child's classroom would look like. All desks have been socially distanced for six feet apart. Every desk, as you can see, has a plexiglass for the protection of our children. In every classroom, we also have a personal protective equipment kit. This will be available to all of our staff and students. Every time a student enters a classroom, he or she will be required to sanitize their hand, and we will also have other items available, such as face masks, thermometer, sanitizer, gloves, disinfecting wipes, and other important items that will be available. Our students will not be sharing any materials and or supplies. And also, it will be very important that our students take notice of all the floor signs. As they leave the classroom, they will be required to stand in a line six feet apart as they leave the classroom. Now we are in the student restrooms. All restrooms have been equipped with signs to remind our students how to properly wash their hands for 20 seconds. 
We also have signs everywhere on campus reminding our students to stay six feet apart and wear their face masks. Only two students will be allowed in the restrooms at a time. All students will receive a ball cap restroom pass. When they come in, they will hang their pass on the door. There's one student. There's two students. Again, we will have a maximum capacity of two students. And if a third student comes to the restroom and sees two signs hanging, students will be asked to make a line right outside on the floor signs. All right, Bobcat families, there will not be traditional recess for a while. The playground will not be operational. During recess breaks, students will be able to find designated areas to socialize with their friends and have a snack. We take a break from the classroom. We encourage all students to bring a healthy snack. Hi, Bobcat families. Welcome back. Students will be able to eat lunch designated indoor and outdoor areas where they will be socially distanced. Outdoor areas will be shaded. Social distancing markings have been applied throughout the school. It will be very important to observe the signs and floor markings everywhere on our campus. These signs will remind our students and staff how to follow safe procedures and protocols such as wearing our face masks properly, staying six feet apart from one another, and washing our hands properly. We have directional lines on the ground that show us which direction we need to walk in the walkways as well as in the hallways. has helped you understand how some of the school procedures and protocols will work. And don't worry, we will continuously teach and remind our Bobcats how to follow daily procedures to keep everyone safe. I can assure you that our students and staff safety will remain as our top priority at all times. We cannot wait to see our students. Remember to stay safe, wear your face mask, and keep social distance with others. We are Bobcat Strong. See you soon. Okay, one, one second. Parents, let me now present the presentation. Can you, can you see my screen? Perfect. So yes. again, thank you so much. Again, we want to apologize. We were, we had a, a short timeline to record this video, but Monday the, the weather was not the greatest, but we did have subtitles. I'm sorry if you did, if you couldn't hear some, uh, some sections of the video, but um, we'll be sharing the videos with everyone in English and Spanish. Uh, les ofrecemos nuevamente una disculpa el aire, la verdad, teníamos una, un día específicamente que teníamos que grabar el video, pero vamos a compartir el video con todos en inglés y en español y van a tener subtítulos. Um, así que that was just a, a short uh, video to, to give us the, just kind of like the entrance into this presentation. The outcome for today's meeting is we want to clarify our reopening dates. We want to discuss our health and safety plan, classroom structure, arrival and dismissal procedures, temperature checkpoints, daily schedule, restrooms and drinking water, breaks, lunch, parent checklist, and COVID-19 protocol for symptomatic students. Los objetivos de la reunión de hoy 
es queremos clarificar nuestras fechas de reapertura, nuestro plan de salud y seguridad, cómo se ven nuestros salones, los procedimientos de entrada y salida, los, uh, los lugares donde vamos a tomar la temperatura, el horario de instrucción, a uh, los baños, el, el, uh, el, el tomar agua, los, los horarios de descanso, almuerzo, una lista para padres y también el protocolo que, el protocolo que vamos a tener de cómo poder identificar estudiantes sintomáticos de COVID-19. We showed the video. Clarify our reopening dates. Two schools in our district, Washington Elementary and Helen Keller, are having a soft opening of starting on March 22nd, this coming up Monday, with kinder through second grade students. Let me clarify this. This is only for students uh, whose parents identified on the parent survey that they would like to send the student uh, back to in-person learning. I do understand that many parents uh, did not complete the survey, not because they didn't want to, but because they need more information, right? You want more, um, more details and information in terms of how the in-person learning will work. And it's okay if you didn't complete the survey. It's okay if you change your mind. Throughout the next month or so, we're going to be sharing confirmed information with you that's going to help you make a decision whether you want to send your child back to school or if you would like your child to finish the school year virtual, uh, virtually. You will have options, parents. But this March 22nd, all the way to spring break, It's for only kinder, first and second. And again, only those parents who are ready to, uh, to send their students uh, to the school site. During this period, student, we still will not have our teachers teaching on campus in person. Let me repeat that. March 22nd through March 31st, the students that will come to our campus will come to learn in their classroom but will still receive the distance learning instruction from their teacher. Who's going to support our students during this period? Our wonderful Think Together team. Think Together will be here on site to supervise students in self-contained classrooms while they continue distance learning. Students will remain on campus until three o'clock and this period, will provide our school with opportunities to tune in our, our policies and procedures to benchmark our practices and to really be ready for when more students start returning after spring break. Vamos a aclarar esta, let, let me go over the second bullet and then I'll go over everything in Spanish. This after spring break, starting April 12th, we are going to start um, asking our teachers to return to in-person instruction. Teachers will begin to plan on returning. Uh, parents will have two options. A hybrid model, which parents don't worry, I'm gonna get into that later in the presentation. I'm going to explain what the hybrid model looks like. The second option for parents will be virtual learning. So parents will have an opportunity to decide what option they want to choose for their child from after spring break until the end of the school year. Teachers will need two asynchronous days to set up the classroom and prepare materials. So again, once teachers start coming in, they, they will need two days to set up the classroom. Let's keep in mind that our teachers have not been on campus since March 13, 2020, when our schools closed. So we definitely need to provide our teachers with time to set up and prepare for our students and for in-person instruction. Depending on student need and which students will learn in person, 
we will prepare the class rosters. And again, we're gonna get into the, the schedule and how the in-person um, hybrid model will work. It is important to know that our district has offered all employees uh, opportunities to get appointments in the city of Lingwood to get vaccinated. Employees are not required to get vaccinated. However, they are hot, highly encouraged to do so. Vamos a clarificar nuestras fechas de reapertura. Dos escuelas en Lingwood, incluyendo Washington y Helen Keller, van a tener una apertura suave de marzo 22 a marzo 31, que viene siendo al, al receso de primavera. Solamente para estudiantes de kinder a segundo grado. Este va a ser un grupo pequeño. Es principalmente para los padres que llenaron la encuesta diciendo que está usted listo para mandar a su hijo a la escuela. Entendemos que no todos los padres llenaron la encuesta. Entendemos que los padres necesitan más detalles, un plan claro para poder tomar esa decisión si usted va a querer mandar a su hijo a la escuela o si su hijo va a terminar el año virtual. Y usted va a tener la oportunidad de pensar a, a, al presentarle nuestros planes, usted va a poder tomar esa decisión. Así que no la tiene que tomar ahorita, va a tener usted opciones. Así que, ¿quién va a enseñar o quién va a supervisar a nuestros estudiantes de marzo 22 a marzo 31? Nuestra colaboración con el equipo de Think Together va a supervisar a los estudiantes eh, durante las 8 de la mañana a 3 de la tarde. Los estudiantes en este periodo van a seguir recibiendo la instrucción de aprendizaje a distancia con su maestro. Déjeme repetir esto. Los estudiantes que comiencen el 22 de marzo al 31 de marzo van a estar en nuestra escuela de lunes a viernes de 8 de la mañana a 3 de la tarde, recibiendo todavía instrucción en línea, pero en el salón, porque nuestros maestros todavía no van a regresar en este periodo. Think Together nos va a apoyar para poder supervisar y monitorear a nuestros estudiantes. Y este periodo, padres, nos va a dar la oportunidad de poder establecer bien nuestros procedimientos, nuestras pólizas, para mantener a todos los estudiantes y personal seguros. Para cuando abramos después del receso de primavera, después de abril 12, y empiecen a venir más estudiantes, vamos a tener ya nuestros procesos y protocolos definidos y establecidos. Ahora, después del receso de primavera, comenzando el 12 de, de abril, es cuando los maestros se van a empezar a preparar para de regresar. Les vamos a empezar a preguntar a los maestros, Es de, 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 de regresar. Nuestros maestros han tenido ya la oportunidad, el distrito le ha dado ya la oportunidad a nuestros maestros de hacer citas para vacunarse aquí en nuestra misma ciudad del Lengua. Es importante saber que no es mandatorio que nuestros empleados, que los empleados se vacunen pero estamos motivando y lo estamos recomendando a todos nuestro personal que se vacune. Muchos ya empezaron a vacunarse, muchos están en el proceso, pero repito, no es mandatorio de que los empleados tomen la vacuna de COVID-19. Y vamos a hablar ahorita más en detalle sobre el reapertura. Ah, otra cosa que quiero mencionar es que los maestros cuando ya regresen les vamos a dar dos días para que puedan arreglar su salón y preparar las, los materiales. Hay que tomar en cuenta 
que hemos estado cerrados desde el 13 de marzo del 2020 y nuestros maestros no han tenido la oportunidad de arreglar sus salones. Ellos van a necesitar esos dos días para poder arreglar los salones. Health and safety plan. Restroom cleanliness. We have established a restroom cleaning schedule. Restrooms will be sanitized during throughout the school day, but specifically during these periods between 9.15 and 9.45 a.m., between 10 and 11 a.m., between 12.45 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. Restrooms will be completely cleaned and disinfected after school. Maximum capacity has been established. We will only allow two students at a time in the restrooms. Signs are posted in the bathrooms and waiting areas are marked to ensure social distance. Uh, the students are to hang their pass on the door. Every student will have their own restroom pass. They will not be sharing a restroom pass. And again, no more than, than two students allowed at a time. Uh, hand washing stations will also be posted, um, signs everywhere. We will have hand washing stations in the outdoor areas, as well as the hand washing sinks in the classrooms and in the restrooms. Classrooms. In the classrooms, the desks have been arranged six feet apart. We have plexiglass dividers that are on each student desk, and we are also adding them to our teacher's desk. There is a sanitation schedule in place during the day when students are on campus. When they step out for their breaks, that's when sanitation will take place inside the classroom. This includes during the morning recess break, during the lunch break, and definitely after school with our disinfected, uh, disinfectant fogger. So when the students come out for their breaks, our cleaning staff will go inside the classrooms to disinfect the areas, the student areas, the student and teacher areas. Students will not be face to face and will remain in stable cohort groups. I will explain what the cohort groups when we start talking about the hybrid model. Students must use hand sanitizer every time they enter the classroom. PPEs, also known as protective, personal protective equipment kits, are placed in every classroom, just like we showed you in the video. We have floor markings to ensure six feet apart during lineup, and also students will not be sharing any supplies or materials. They will have their own materials. Plan de seguridad y de salud. En los baños, la limpieza de los baños, hemos establecido un horario para que los baños sean sanitados durante el día escolar, específicamente durante estos, estas horas, de 9.15 a 9.45, entre 10 y 11 de la mañana, y entre 12.45 a 12 y media de la tarde. Los baños serán completamente uh, sanitados, uh, limpiados, y desinfectados después de escuela con nuestro equipo de la tarde. La capacidad de dos estudiantes, uh, tenemos, tendremos el letrero en todos los baños para que los estudiantes les recordemos que solamente dos estudiantes pueden entrar a la vez. Y tendremos los letreros en el piso para que puedan los estudiantes estar socialmente distanciados mientras que esperan entrar al baño. Los estudiantes tendrán un pase de baño, un pase para cada estudiante. No van a compartir el pase. Y la manera de monitorear quién está en el baño es el estudiante podrá colgar su pase en la puerta del baño para que cuando venga otro estudiante pueda ver si hay cupo para otro estudiante. Si no, van a tener que esperar en, el, en la línea. Uh, vamos a tener letreros en todos los baños de cómo recordarles a nuestros estudiantes cómo lavarse las manos. En los salones tenemos los escritorios ya uh, apartados seis pies. Tenemos también los, um, el, los dividores de plexiglas en cada escritorio de estudiante 
a la vez de, a, y a la misma vez el escritorio del maestro para proteger a nuestros estudiantes y a nuestros maestros. Los estudiantes no estarán de cara a cara. Ustedes saben, antes teníamos los escritorios en grupos. Ahorita por un tiempo vamos a tener los escritorios todos viendo la misma dirección y a um, seis pies de distancia. Los estudiantes y personal serán requeridos de usar sanita, sanitador de mano cada vez que entren al salón. Tenemos kits, paquetes de desinfectante um, en cada salón, como enseñamos en el video. Si al estudiante se le pierde su cubreboca, si al estudiante se le olvida su cubreboca o al maestro, vamos a tener cubrebocas um, a, a, disponibles, a, guantes, a, a, jalea de desinfectante, a, wipes, toallas. Todo va a estar listo en el salón para que esté, uh, tengan los maestros y, y estudiantes tengan eso uh, disponibles. Nuevamente, tenemos letreros en los pisos para que los estudiantes sepan cómo ponerse en línea antes de salirse del salón a uh, seis pies aparte. Y por último, los estudiantes no van a compartir materiales. Cada estudiante va a tener su equipo de materiales. No vamos a poder compartir lápices, crayolas, no. Cada quien tendrá sus propios materiales. We have a, a couple of photos here to show you once again what the PPE kits look like. Every classroom have, uh, has these items available. You can also see to my right how the desk, they each have the plexiglass and they are six feet apart. Aquí tenemos dos fotos donde usted puede ver los, uh, los artículos de, de uh, desinfectante que tenemos disponibles en cada salón. Y pueden ver a mi derecha los escritorios que están socialmente distanciados, seis pies con el dividor de plexiglas en cada escritorio. Health and safety plan continue. Face masks. Face masks will, will have to be wearing them at all times. Students and staff, everyone, we must wear them. Face masks uh, will, uh, must be worn over our nose and mouth and closed at the chin area. And if needed, the school will supply a face mask to staff and or students. Staff members may remove the mask when they are alone in the room if they're taking their lunch break. Staff members may also remove their mask when eating with others provided that they are six feet apart. For example, if they go to the staff lounge to have a lunch break, uh, that is the golden rule. They must be six apart and preferably in an outside area. Cleaning and disinfecting, like we shared earlier, custodial staff will sanitize classrooms during the first break, recess break, lunch break, and after school. Classrooms will be cleaned completely, disinfected daily after school. Cleaning schedules are also in place to ensure that all high-touch common areas are cleaned regularly and disinfected daily. Indoor quality, indoor air quality, our district has ordered for every classroom and they are scheduled to be installed. This, these are the MERV 13 filters. We also talked about it in the, in the video that will be installed, that, that will be in every classroom to ensure that the air is um, filtering regularly throughout the school day. The classroom stores will be open during instruction to allow fresh air inside. Continuamos con el plan de seguridad y de salud. Cubrebocas. Las cubrebocas tendremos que tener puestas en todo momento, estudiantes y miembros del personal. Los cubrebocas tienen que cubrir la boca, la nariz y el área aquí de, de nuestra, um, nuestra, nuestra chin aquí uh, y si se nece, si necesita un estudiante o un miembro de personal nuestra escuela va a tener 
cubrebocas disponibles también para nuestros estudiantes. Los miembros del personal pueden removerse la, el cubreboca cuando están solos en el salón o también cuando están um, quizás en su descanso de almuerzo y están en el salón de, de, de lonche y, y, y estén comiendo quizás con un grupo, otro grupo del personal, pero la regla será de que tienen que estar seis pies aparte pero preferiblemente les pediremos al personal si quieren comer en una área afuera o en su salón, um, si, si están ellos, ¿verdad?, y también solos. La limpieza y desinfectante. El personal de limpieza va a sanitar los salones durante el primer descanso de los estudiantes, el descanso de, almu de almuerzo, y después de escuela, cuando los estudiantes se vayan a casa. Los salones serán también limpiados y completamente desinfectados diario después de escuela. Un horario tenemos de limpieza para asegurarnos que también todas las áreas que tocamos comúnmente, como los, el lavabo, ¿verdad?, de los baños, a uh, la, la, la fuente de agua que van a usar nuestros estudiantes para, para llenar sus, sus botellas o también como las la, para abrir las puertas, los doorknobs, ¿verdad? Lo, um, discúlpenme, el, el, para abrir la puerta, estas áreas las que tocamos. Las manecillas de la puerta. ¿Los qué? Las manecillas de la puerta. Muchas gracias, Marta. Las manecillas de las puertas, sí, uh, que, que tocamos diariamente. E Esas son las áreas de alto toco que vamos a tener que desinfectar diario. La cualidad del aire adentro de los salones, nuestro distrito ordenó y compró filtros llamados MERV-13, que son filtros muy eficientes y recientes que han ha demostrado que pueden filtrar el aire regularmente durante el día escolar. Vamos a tener las puertas abiertas también durante la instrucción para poder um, tener aire fresco que entre a cada salón. Again, a couple more photos to just demonstrate the floor signs in the classrooms so that students may line up before they exit the classroom and how the, the restrooms for the children um, look with the signs and the restroom passes. Aquí dos fotos que demuestran las X de cómo nuestros estudiantes pueden estar en línea, ¿verdad? Seis pies apartados y también la puerta de los baños de estudiantes que demuestra los letreros de solamente dos estudiantes a la vez. Uh, recordándoles, Mr. Bobcat says, stay six feet apart. Dice Mr. Bobcat que nos estemos seis pies aparte y también a recordarles de ponernos nuestro cubreboca. Y aquí está una, una foto de los pases, cómo van a colgar cuando entren al baño. These are our hand washing stations. We receive three hand washing stations. They will be located next to every entry point as well as our uh, lunch area. When students get screened in the morning when they enter, the first thing they will do is go to a hand washing station and wash their hands so that they may then uh, proceed into their designated area. To the right, we have, again, just a photo of the restroom in, in, our, in our children's, uh, students' restrooms, right, with the signs. Aquí tenemos las fotos de la estación de lavamano. Recibimos tres estaciones portables de lavamano. Las tres estaciones estarán disponibles en las áreas donde entran nuestros estudiantes a la escuela y también en el área del almuerzo. Cuando nuestros, nuestros estudiantes entren a la escuela en la mañana, lo primero que van a tener que hacer es lavarse las manos y después poder seguir a la área designada para esperar a su maestro. 
Y aquí otra foto donde demuestra los letreros que hemos puesto en todos los baños de nuestros estudiantes, como enseñándoles cómo lavar las manos uh, por 20 segundos, y es algo que ustedes también nos pueden ayudar a preparar a nuestros niños en casa, cómo lavarnos bien las manos. Ingress and egress. Ingress, this is how our procedure will be when our students enter to the campus. We will have two entry gates. Let me repeat that. We will have two entry gates and students will only be able to enter through these two entry gates. One gate will be for the walking students. That will be our Harris gate. So all students, all parents that walk their students to school, you will enter through the Harris gate behind our cafeteria. The second entry gate will be the driving drop-off, which will be in front of our school by our drop-off area on Pine Street. This is only for the students who will get dropped off by car. So parents, this is a good time for me to say, if you're walking your child, I know previously, pre-pandemic, you were able to walk your child through the drive up area. I'm sorry that, it, that entry will only be for the students who get dropped off by car. Students will remain in the cars until they are screened by a staff member. And the walking students, when you get to the Harris Gate, there will be another screening station there so that uh, our students can, can get screened also by a staff member. The sidewalks have been marked to ensure social distance six feet apart at both entrances. Campus monitors and additional staff will screen students and staff prior to entry. Administrators and campus safety officers will help us ensure that our parents are adhering to all the safety protocols. We're really gonna need your support, parents. We need to work together to ensure that we're following the, safety, the safe precautions and to ensure that everyone, we're keeping everyone safe. And once again, we talked about the hand washing stations that are going to be in place at both entry points close to the lunch uh, and close to the lunch area. Sorry, there's a typo there. So we have a total of three total hand washing stations. Now let's talk about the egress, right? At the end of the day, the dismissal, the students will exit the campus again, either through the Harris Gate by walk up or the Pine Street gate by drive up. So all students who are going to get picked up by car, they will walk up to the Pine Street um, designated area. And our students who get picked up by um, parents who come walking, our teachers will walk them safely to the Harris Gate. We will have student wait stations that are properly marked to ensure those social distancing. So while the students are waiting for their parents, there will be floor marts over by the Pine Street so that parents can wait, the students can wait safely. We will have the monitors and support staff monitoring our students so that when the car arrives, students can safely go in the car and go home for the day. There will also be a parent waiting station by the Harris Gate. We will have, we will open the big gates and there will be a designated area for parents to wait while the students walk to you. We will have floor signs uh, on, we will have floor markings six feet apart. And this is parents where we're going to need your support and cooperation while you are waiting. Um, Yes, if you're if we're socializing with other parents, we will not prohibit you to socialize with other parents, but we cannot be close together. We're going to have to follow this protocol and stand on a floor marking that you see as you wait for your child patiently. 
and we will be out there to support as well. We'll have cones and other barriers to define the parent spaces and parents at no time, we will be able um, to have the parents be on campus. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the parents and visitors on campus. We will not close the doors on you parents. However, we just need a procedure, a safe procedure, if you need to have an appointment with either your child's teacher or an administrator, Dr. Morales or Ms. Verdusco. We're not closing our doors, we just need to uh, limit the people who are on campus. Vamos a hablar sobre la entrada y la salida. En la entrada tendremos dos puertas donde nuestros estudiantes podrán entrar el cada mañana. Una entrada será para los estudiantes, los padres que van a caminar a sus hijos a la escuela. Esa entrada va a ser en la Harris Gate, atrás de la cafetería. La segunda entrada será para los padres que van a llevar a sus hijos en carro a la escuela. Esa entrada será enfrente de nuestra escuela por la calle Pine. Es importante decir que solamente los, los, los estudiantes que lleguen en carro podrán entrar por la entrada de Pine Street. Los estudiantes que lleguen caminando solamente van a poder entrar por la calle de Harris. Yo sé que en el pasado teníamos, podía, los padres podían encaminar a sus hijos por la calle donde, por la entrada donde también pasan los carros. Discúlpenos, por este tiempo solamente va a poder entrar por la Harris Gate y los que vienen en carro por la calle de Pine. Los estudiantes que lleguen en el carro tendrán que permanecer en su carro hasta que un miembro del personal los evalúe. Los estudiantes que lleguen caminando por las Harris Gate, va a haber letreros en el piso para que usted pueda esperar pacientemente con su hijo, mientras que miembros del personal evalúan a nuestros estudiantes y cada uno pueda, um, pueda entrar. Tendremos disponible a los administradores, los a, oficiales de seguridad a, en, en la escuela, ayudando y apoyando, ¿verdad? Que todos los padres, todos estemos siguiendo estos protocolos de seguridad. Ahora, a la salida. Cuando nuestros estudiantes salgan ya um, para irse a casa, usaremos las mismas dos puertas de salida. La Harris Gate será para los padres que recojan a sus hijos caminando y la salida de Pine Street será para los padres que recojan a sus hijos en carro. Tendremos estaciones designadas donde vamos a tener letreros en el piso para que los estudiantes puedan esperar allí a sus padres que lleguen en carro a socialmente distanciados. Y también tenemos el personal que estará supervisando y monitoreando a nuestros estudiantes. Para los padres que vayan caminando a recoger a sus hijos, vamos a abrir el portón de, de Harris Gate, las puertas grandes. Usted va a poder entrar a una área designada, ahí vamos a marcar, donde usted va a poder esperar pacientemente por su hijo a la hora de salida. Les pedimos amablemente que no podemos estar conversando cerquitas con otros padres. Van a ver letreros en el piso donde usted va a poder pararse para esperar a su hijo. Y apreciamos su apoyo y su cooperación. Tenemos que trabajar juntos para uh, proteger a todos. Vamos a tener conos para poder definir los espacios donde los padres se van a poder parar. Y no vamos a poder tener a padres um, adentro de la escuela. Solamente no vamos a cerrarle la puerta a nuestros padres o visitantes. Quiero aclarar. Simplemente tenemos que limitar 
el número de personas que están adentro de la escuela. Usted va a poder todavía hacer citas, quizás con el maestro de su hijo, quizás conmigo, ¿verdad? Con Dr. Morales. Y podemos tener esas juntas en persona. Simplemente vamos a tener un sistema uh, para poder uh, tener, uh, para poder monitorear el número de personas que están adentro de la escuela. Screening of staff and students. Staff will be taking self-evaluations daily. And as they enter, we will also have a screening station for our staff by the, next to the staff parking lot. We will take their temperature daily as well. And uh, our, our, our staff will have um, a, a sign-in station where they will sign in every morning. We actually had this presentation for our staff yesterday as well so that everyone can be on the same page. Our students will also be screened every day in two locations. And I know some of the, these things I'm gonna sound repetitive, but it's okay, I wanna make sure we're clear on this. Our students will be able to get screened in two locations. If they walk to school, they will be screened at the Harris Gate. If they drive to school, they will be screened at the Pine Gate. Once our students enter, they will wash their hands and proceed to their designated area. All students will have their temperature taken. And we have a protocol in place for our screening staff. Our screening staff will ask the students a variety of questions, such as, have you been sick? Let me show you the protocol. I hope that you are able to see. So before a student gets admitted into school, uh, we will ask if the student has had any contact with anyone infected with COVID-19 in the last 14 days. Of course, this question will also go to the parent, right? Um, if they say yes, we're gonna ask our students to stand to the side. So if there are any signs that the student might not be able to walk in, if we take their temperature and their temperature is greater than 100.4, we will have a cool down tent where the parent, the student can wait maybe for five or 10 minutes because we understand that sometimes maybe our students are gonna run to the gate and they're gonna be a little short in breath and they might show a temperature. And if we allow them to cool down, the parent will have an opportunity to bring the student back in 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, we will retake the temperature. And if it's safe to do so, the student will be clear to enter. Now the parents that drive the students to, to the, um, to the, the school, if your student shows a temperature of at least 100.4, we will ask you to go park, maybe allow your child to cool down. Again, we wanna give students an opportunity to maybe come back and we can retake the temperature. If the student is still showing a temperature, we will ask the student to go home. If the student is clear to come in after we ask these questions, um, for example, have you experienced any of the following in the last 24 hours? A cough, a diarrhea, vomiting, have you had a fever? Um, and then we're gonna take their temperature. This will be our protocol to determine if a student is clear to enter the campus. This is where we will need your help, parents to screen your child before they come to school. And we're gonna provide you with a, a cheat sheet where you're gonna be able to know what signs you can look out for. Um, and and that, that's how you can make that decision if your child is, is good to come to school. Evaluando a nuestro personal y estudiantes. Nuestro personal serán evaluados todos los días. Les tomaremos la temperatura y tendremos la estación para ellos en el área del estacionamiento donde se estacionan. 
tenemos ya el protocolo establecido para uh, evaluar a nuestros, a, nuestro, a nuestros miembros del personal. Nuestros estudiantes serán evaluados también todas las mañanas en dos áreas. Nuevamente, para los padres que encaminen a sus hijos a la escuela, los estudiantes serán evaluados en la puerta de Harris. Para los padres que traigan a sus hijos en carro, los estudiantes serán evaluados en la puerta de Pine, Pine Street. Tenemos un protocolo para los estudiantes uh, para evaluarlos cuando entren. Este es el protocolo. Les vamos a preguntar a los estudiantes uh, varias preguntas. Si han tenido contacto con alguien uh, que transmitió el COVID-19 en los últimos 14 días. Um, y pues estas preguntas van a ser para los padres, ¿verdad? Eh, los padres también ocupamos ocupar su apoyo para que conteste estas preguntas. Vamos a preguntarle a los estudiantes si han experimentado algunos de estos síntomas. Fiebre de 100.4 o más alto. Una tos, diarrea, vómito. Si nuestro estudiante no ha tenido ningún otro son, síntoma, pero al tomarle la temperatura, el estudiante tiene una temperatura de 100.4 o más alto, vamos a tener, vamos a darle la oportunidad al padre que se estacione o que lleve al estudiante a, a una carpa donde vamos a tener para que el estudiante descanse poquito, porque entendemos que quizás el estudiante corrió hacia la puerta y se agitó quizás, um, y, le, y tendrá la oportunidad el padre de regresar quizás 10 o 15 minutos después para tomar la temperatura, y si demuestra la misma temperatura, el estudiante tendrá que irse a casa. Aquí es el protocolo que nuestro personal va a implementar cuando estemos evaluando a nuestros estudiantes. Just a photo of the amazing work that our campus monitors have done, screening our visitors, screening our staff, screening our students that have been coming on campus. We are very grateful for the amazing job that they have been doing thus far. Um, tenemos aquí fotos de nuestros monitor monitores de, de la escuela que han estado aquí desde el principio haciendo un gran trabajo evaluando a, a, a cada persona que entra a la escuela. One quick second, please. We will provide our parents with a parent checklist to uh, help you screen your child for possible symptoms of COVID-19 before the start of the school. Let me show you that checklist. I hope you're able to see it. So these are just uh, actions that you can take and points to consider. Uh, screening at home, do not send your child to school if they have COVID-like symptoms of a fever greater than 100.4. Um, if anyone in the home is COVID positive, do not send your child to school. If they were exposed to someone with COVID positive in the last 10 days, do not send them to school. Um, contact the school office. This will be very important, parents. Communication is key, and we will need you to contact the school office, the teacher, or the nurse if your child is ill and is staying at home. This, uh, this chart will also uh, share the difference between isolation versus quarantine, right? Isolation is 10 days for students who are ill with COVID-like symptoms or have tested positive for COVID. And then we have quarantine. Quarantine for 10 days is for students who have been exposed to someone who is COVID positive in the school. Let me explain that. If we get a call and a parent, um, and there's gonna be many different scenarios, parents, but let me just share this one in particular. If we have our students learning in the classroom 
and we get a call that says, you know what, um, my, I, I am presenting COVID-like symptoms. It's still um, not confirmed. I will let you know if I am positive, but my child needs to come home. We will immediately bring the student out of the classroom so that he or she can get picked up. But then later that parent calls us to tell us that the, that the parent um, has a confirmed uh, positive test then we will have to send the entire cohort, the entire group uh, that was with that student home to quarantine for 10 days. And I know that we're gonna need to give you more, more training, more information, because I know there's gonna be different scenarios, but this sheet will help you understand um, some of the terms as well as what you can do to prepare your child again every day before they come to school. Tenemos aquí una lista. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, let me finish. We also have a family recommitment letter. This is very important, parents. When for those parents that will send their children to in person learning in the next month, right? parents will have to complete a family recommitment letter. Uh, this letter must be completed before the student starts school. Let me show you the family recommitment letter. The family recommitment letter will be able to uh, ensure that we have an agreement that you as a parent, as a family, as a guardian, will help us follow these guidelines. You will adhere to these guidelines to help us ensure a safe environment, right? Uh, no caregivers or family members are allowed inside the gates. They must stay in designated locations. Each entry point will have a, a clear signs, markings to support six feet of social distancing. Before entering the campus, the students uh, will take the students' temperature, so on and so forth. This is where we will need you to complete and sign um, so that we have a mutual agreement and, and how we're going to support each other. Tenemos una lista para nuestros padres de cómo preparar a nuestros estudiantes todos los días para mandarlos a la escuela. Vamos a compartir con ustedes esta lista la vamos a mandar a casa para que usted sepa cómo evaluar a su hijo todas las mañanas antes de mandar a su hijo a la escuela. Esta lista está disponible en inglés y en español, ¿verdad? Si usted ve que su hijo está teniendo algún síntoma de COVID-19, ya sea una fiebre, uh, tiene dificultad de respirar o, o tiene um, vómito, ¿verdad? Vómito o, o diarrea, no mande a su hijo a la escuela. Y llame a nuestra escuela inmediatamente, contactar a la enfermera, al maestro o a, al miembro de la, de la oficina para avisarnos que su hijo se va, a, se va a quedar en casa porque está enfermo. También tenemos aquí la diferencia de lo que es isolación y también la, la, cuaren, la cuarentena, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es la diferencia? A los estudiantes que van a estar... Um, isolados, ¿verdad? Por 10 días, va a ser porque uh, están presentando síntomas de COVID-19 o tuvieron un examen positivo de COVID-19. También tenemos aquí la diferencia para los estudiantes que van a tener que estar en cuarentena por 10, por 10 días y esta será la diferencia. Expliqué cómo este escenario, esta escena. Y vamos a tener diferentes situaciones, pero hay que decir que tenemos a nuestro grupo de estudiantes adentro del salón aprendiendo. Y recibimos una llamada en la oficina donde un padre dice, estoy presentando síntomas de COVID-19, todavía no tengo mis resultados, pero les estoy informando para ir a recoger a mi hijo ahorita. Nosotros inmediatamente sacaremos al estudiante de la clase para que sea recogido por el padre y el padre después nos llama y nos dice, 
tenemos, uh, tengo mis resultados y salí positivo, es cuando tenemos que mandar inmediatamente a la, al, al grupo, no a la escuela, al grupo que está donde estaba el estudiante, los tendremos que mandar a casa, al igual que al maestro, ¿verdad? Y van a tener que estar en cuarentena por 10 días. Tenemos cartas que mandaremos a casa con los otros padres de los estudiantes. Haremos llamadas a los padres. La comunicación va a ser clave para mantener a todos informados de cualquier caso posible uh, que tendremos en la escuela. También tendremos una carta de compromiso que los padres van a tener que llenar para los estudiantes que van a regresar a la escuela en persona. Este viene siendo como un acuerdo entre la casa, entre los padres y la escuela, donde usted nos va a dar su firma y nos va a dar su apoyo y usted nos da su compromiso que nos va a ayudar a seguir estas guías para poder tener un ambiente seguro para todos en la escuela. Esta carta se le mandará a usted antes de que su estudiante regrese a clases en persona. Parents and visitors. Parents and visitors will not be able to be on campus unless they have an appointment with an administrator and or a teacher. Special events or meetings such as open house, parent conferences, and council meetings will be held virtually. We will have these signs to show our visitors uh, what are the student area only. Um, so that you know that we won't be able to pass beyond that point. Para nuestros padres y visitantes, uh, tendremos, uh, tenemos letreros donde va a decir que solamente el estudiante puede pasar a la escuela. En estos momentos no vamos a poder tener a padres y visitantes adentro de la escuela. Solamente que tenga una cita con el, el administrador o con el maestro de su hija, ¿verdad? O de su hijo. Los eventos especiales o juntas de padres como casa abierta, conferencias de padres, um, concilios, esas juntas por lo pronto seguirán virtuales. COVID-19 protocols for symptomatic students at school. Our district has established a protocol uh, and we have, uh, we have presented this protocol to our staff and we will, to, we will continue to train our staff on how to identify symptomatic students at school. For example, a sick student who is at school with positive COVID-19 symptoms, or maybe a parent reports a sick child at home that had been at school recently. Maybe the student is at home sick, but the student was present at school the day before, right? What do we do in that case? Or a parent reports a student is positive for COVID-19. Or maybe a teacher gets a phone call from a family member saying that there's a possible positive case. So all of these different scenarios, we will have close contact with our health technician, Ms. Borders, with our district nurse, Ms. Erin, so that we can evaluate each situation closely and carefully, and we can follow steps, proper steps such as reporting it to our health te technician. And then our health technician will report the case and consult with our district nurse, Erin Okasaki, who will provide consultation on the case. And then we can, again, report it to district to ensure that we are following the proper protocols. Tenemos un protocolo esta establecido de COVID-19 de cómo poder identificar estudiantes sintomáticos en la escuela. Este protocolo se, ha, se le ha presentado a nuestro personal y vamos a seguir con entrenamiento para que todo miembro del personal sepa qué pasos tomar si pasa lo siguiente. Uno, 
quizás está un estudiante enfermo en la escuela con síntomas de COVID-19. Quizás un padre reporta que un niño enfermo que ya está en casa estuvo presente en la escuela recientemente. O quizás un padre reporta que un estudiante ha sido positivo por COVID-19. O quizás un maestro uh, recibió una llamada o un reporte de un miembro de la familia que dice, tenemos un caso positivo en casa. O mi estudiante, así, mi hijo, ha sido COVID-19 positivo. Cualquier de estos es son escenarios será muy importante de tener, tener una colaboración muy cerca con nuestra enfermera de la escuela Miss Borders y con nuestra enfermera del distrito Miss Erin. Tenemos que seguir estos pasos, reportarlo inmediatamente, colaborar con nuestra enfermera de la escuela y reportar el caso con nuestra enfermera del distrito para recibir una consultación del caso y cuáles van a ser nuestros pasos si, uh, siguientes. A la misma vez, comunicarnos con nuestras familias que quizás van a ser impactadas por, por diferentes situaciones. I know parents, it's a lot of information and, um, and, and we, we hope that the information is being shared clearly. We have a wellness room at every school. Well, you know, we're talking, Washington Elementary has a wellness room as well as a health tent. In our wellness room, this room will be available for, again, students who are possibly showing symptoms of COVID-19 and need to go home. And they are waiting for their parents to be picked up. We also have a health tent that will be located outside behind the, the, the nurse office um, in case we need a, an additional space to evaluate our students and where our parents, our students can wait safely until they get picked up. Tenemos nuestro salón de recuperación, donde vamos a tener disponible en caso que tengamos estudiantes que están demostrando síntomas de COVID-19 y tienen que ser recogidos, ¿verdad? Por sus, por sus familias. Tendremos este espacio y también tenemos una carpa de salud que va a estar localizada afuera, atrás de la oficina de la enfermera, para tener un espacio adicional en caso que tengamos más estudiantes que tienen que estar en una área de recuperación mientras que esperan a sus familias. Breaks, breakfast, and lunch. Students will be provided with breaks. All breaks will occur in designated areas and follow all social distancing guidelines. Students will have mats to sit on the grass, so students will not be able to have the traditional recess where they're gonna share equipment. They will be able to have breaks, to have their snacks, to socialize with their friends from a six feet uh, distance, and just to allow them with time to relax and unwind outside of the class. Breakfast and lunch will be provided and our Think Together staff as well as our campus monitors will pick up the breakfast and lunches and will supervise our students while they're having their lunch and, and, and breakfast. We have designated areas, areas for our students to eat. That is the cafeteria and also outdoor areas that are provided with social distancing. Uh, so our students will not be able to eat very close together. The areas will be marked so that our students can remove their face mask and enjoy their lunch. Outside meal pickup. For those parents that pick up meals at, our, at the schools that have the distribution, um, the food distribution meals, please know that you will not be able to pick up lunch for the student that's already coming to the school in person. You can still pick up meals for the students that are not coming to school in person, but when your child starts coming to school in person, you will no longer um, have to pick up a meal because your child will already be picking a meal, uh, getting lunch and meals in person on campus. 
los descansos, uh, desayunos y almuerzo. Nuestros estudiantes tendrán tiempos de descanso para salir de, de la clase. No van a tener un recreo tradicional por ahorita donde van a poder correr y jugar. Tenemos que monitorear a nuestros estudiantes y asegurarnos que están en su grupo y vamos a tener, um, uh, uh, no manteles, pero tapetes, tapetes donde se puedan sentar uh, distanciadamente, quitarse el cubreboca, comerse su, su bocadillo, uh, poder jugar con sus amigos, no jugar, poder platicar con sus amigos y darles un descanso de la clase. Tendremos el personal. De, de apoyo que va a estar afuera monitoreando a nuestros estudiantes. Les vamos a servir desayuno y almuerzo a nuestros estudiantes. Tenemos dos áreas donde nuestros niños podrán comer, la cafetería y una área afuera que va a tener sombra. Los estudiantes estarán seis pies uh, distanciados para que se puedan remover su cubreboca y puedan puedan co comer a gusto y disfrutar sus alimentos. Para los, las familias que recogen comida ahorita en las escuelas de distribución, ya cuando su hijo regrese a la escuela, usted ya no va a poder recoger la comida en, en, esas, en las, esas escuelas, porque ya su hijo va a estar recibiendo los alimentos en persona. Drinking water. Our tra traditional water fountains will not be operational. We will have bottle filling water stations available for our students. We encourage every student to bring their own water bottles labeled with their names. They will have opportunities to refill their water bottles throughout the day. Um, and we will also have again waiting areas marked so students can wait in line. Um, and as well as um, just making sure students have access to, to these, these water uh, filling stations. Um, yeah, tenemos nuestras estaciones de agua, donde tradicionalmente el estudiante no va a poder tomar agua de la, directamente de la fuente, pero va, motivamos a nuestros niños que vengan a la escuela con sus botellas de agua. Van a tener la oportunidad de llenar sus, sus botellas durante el día escolar en estas estaciones de agua. Ok, this is the last part of our informational meeting so that we can get into the questions. So, this is our instructional schedule or our instructional models for these two periods. Again, we're, since we're one of the pilot schools, we're gonna have an instructional model from March 22nd through the 31st, and then after spring break, all the way to June 16th, which is the last day of school. From March 30, 22nd through 31st, we're gonna have kinder through second students learning distance learning on campus. And again, this is only for the parents who select the students to come back to in-person um, learning. Uh, but again, they will still receive distance learning instruction from their teacher. And then the other kinder through second grade students, um, those students will continue to be at home receiving distance learning instruction. Our preschool, TK, and third through six during this period will continue to receive distance learning at home as this is the only option available during this period. After spring break to June 16th, our TK through sixth grade students, this is where we are going to start hearing from parents and also knowing that which teachers are ready to return to in-person and students will be able, or parents will be able to decide on two options. Option one will be at home distance learning. This is for parents who decide that they want their child to finish the school year in distance learning. And it's the schedule that they are receiving now. Synchronous and asynchronous learning, meaning live instruction from the teacher and then online assignments Monday through Friday. 
Second option for parents will be the hybrid schedule, A and B. For this schedule, we are going to have two groups. I am going to go to the next slide to show this schedule, and then I'll be back to translate in Spanish. This is the hybrid schedule option. We cannot have more than 14 students in a classroom. I repeat, we cannot have more than 14 students in a classroom. So we will have to have two groups. Group A will be the group of students who will come to school to receive in-person instruction from a teacher on Mondays and on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. They will receive instruction from their teacher and in the afternoon they will be supported by Think Together in physical education activities as well as supporting students with online assignments. On Monday and Tuesday, Group B is not going to come to school. Group B is going to be part having, they're going to have asynchronous days, which means they will be at home completing online work that is going to be provided by their teacher. Okay. On Wednesdays, that's our asynchronous day for both groups, meaning no students and no staff will be on campus. This day will be used to clean our entire campus, to disinfect completely, and prepare for our Group B students that will come on Thursday and Friday. Wednesdays will also be used to provide our teachers with planning time, office hours, professional development, as well as staff meetings. Our students who will be in Group B, they will come to in-person instruction on Thursdays and on Fridays from 8.45 until three o'clock. They will receive live instruction from a teacher. Group A will not come on Thursday, Friday. Group A will be in asynchronous learning on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday. This is the option for the parents who decide to do the hybrid schedule, which is two days in person receiving instruction and three days out of the week, they will receive asynchronous learning, which is online learning, online assignments. I'm now going to say this in Spanish because I know that um, You know, I, we're, we're going to have questions. Vamos ahora a hablar sobre los modelos de instrucción. Tenemos el modelo de, uh, de marzo 22 a 31, porque recuerden, Washington y Keller son las dos escuelas que, que vamos a empezar primero. Marzo 22 a 31, tenemos uh, a los de kinder y segundo, a, a, para los padres que ya están listos de mandarlos a la escuela, van a seguir recibiendo aprendizaje a distancia de sus maestros, porque los maestros no van a estar aquí en la escuela todavía. Pero los otros estudiantes de kinder a segundo, que los padres todavía no están listos para mandarlos a la escuela, van a seguir recibiendo aprendizaje a distancia en la casa. Para nuestros niños en preescolar, TK y tercero a sexto, es la única opción para que los estudiantes sigan en la casa aprend um, recibiendo aprendizaje a distancia. Después del receso de primavera hasta el 16 de junio, que es el último día de escuela, 
es cuando ya van a empezar a regresar maestros al salón. Es cuando ya los padres de estudiantes TK a sexto van a poder tomar la decisión de, en dos opciones. Los padres van a tener dos opciones. La primera opción es de recibir distancia, aprendizaje a distancia para los padres que quieran que sus hijos permanezcan en casa hasta el final del año. Van a seguir recibiendo instrucción virtual como, como lo están haciendo ahorita, ¿verdad? Sincrónicamente y asincrónicamente de lunes a viernes. Para los padres que decidan en la opción 2, que es el horario, espero y diga esto bien, hybrid, híbrido, híbrido como el horario combinado, es donde vamos a tener grupo A y grupo B. Me voy a ir a la siguiente ventana para que pueda explicarles bien cómo funciona esta opción. No podemos tener más de 14 estudiantes en un salón. Así que dependiendo en cuántos estudiantes regresen a la escuela en persona, vamos a tener que dividir a los estudiantes en grupo A y en grupo B. El grupo A vendrá a la escuela los lunes y martes solamente de 8.45 a.m. a 3 p.m. Grupo B no va a venir a la escuela los lunes y, viernes, y martes. Ellos van a recibir tareas en línea del maestro los lunes, jueves, martes y miércoles. El día miércoles no vamos a tener ni estudiantes ni miembros del personal en la escuela. Este día será para dar una limpieza en detalle, desinfectar completamente para prepararnos para el grupo B. Aquí tendremos este día para los maestros que tengan tiempo de planear, para que tengan oportunidades de entrenamientos y para que tengan oportunidades de horas de oficina, ¿verdad? Comunicarse con, con padres, con estudiantes y también juntas, um, juntas de, de personal. El grupo B vendrá a la escuela en persona los jueves y los viernes de 8.45 a.m. a 3 de la tarde. Grupo A participará en trabajos en línea los miércoles, los jueves y los viernes. Así que esto es muy importante Entender que si decidimos esta opción, nuestros hijos vendrán a la escuela en persona dos días de la semana. Los otros tres días, los estudiantes recibirán a trabajos en línea de sus maestros. It's, it's, it's very important to also understand that you will be getting a confirmed list, right? Based on students' needs, we will be able to identify which teachers are going to teach in person and which teachers will have to teach distance learning for those parents who want the option of distance learning. Our district has a, um, a list in place as to how we're going to start asking our teachers to return, right? We will have teachers on campus teaching live instruction. And this is where I need to let you know that, I know, and I know this is going to sound complicated, But please know that we cannot guarantee 100% that your child will continue with the same teacher 
for this last quarter of the school year. But please know that before you make your decision, you will know if your child's teacher is going to be teaching in person or is going to be teaching distance learning. No, but, but, but I also want you to know that if you choose the option hybrid, the in-person option, that will be a good way for us to know, okay, these are the number of teachers that we need on campus to teach our students. We're not saying no to any parent who says, I am ready to send my child to in-person instruction. So as we start getting those um, calls from you, um, those survey responses where you're saying, I want the hybrid model. I understand that my child will only be um, taught two days in person at school. That's going to help us staff those groups because the staffing is going to evolve around student needs. How many students will be in person? How many students will be receiving instruction via distance learning? And know this parents, if you say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to send my child to in-person learning, right? But later you, um, we, we, uh, we learned that maybe your child's teacher is not going to be your child's teacher on campus and you change your mind and you say, well, I want my child to keep his or her teacher. I am going to, I want to switch to the virtual learning. You will have that flexibility. However, they will be a cutoff, a cutoff date later in the year to where you're gonna have to just, um, your child will have to stay with that option until the, the, the end of the school year. Ahora, sabemos que después del receso, vamos a empezar a llamarle, ¿verdad? A, 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 vamos a empezar a recibir la lista de cuáles maestros ya están listos para regresar, ¿verdad? Ya han sido vacunados. El distrito tiene una, tiene una lista de señoría, de, de antigüedad, lo se dice, de los maestros que tienen que regresar, ¿verdad? A primero, o los maestros que ya están preparados, ya se vacunaron, ¿verdad? Ya están preparados para regresar. Antes de que usted tome su decisión, um, vamos a hacer lo mejor posible para enseñarles a ustedes el, la lista de cuáles maestros ya van a empezar a dar la clase en persona y cuáles maestros van a dar la clase virtualmente. El maestro no va a poder hacer las dos cosas. El maestro no va a poder dar la clase en persona y también virtual. Es muy importante que entendamos eso. Así que usted va a poder tomar esa decisión, pero no podemos garantizar que el maestro que tiene ahorita su hijo va a ser el mismo maestro que va a tener el resto del año escolar. Y es por eso que usted va a poder tomar la decisión y quizás cambiarla después. Si usted dice, yo ya estoy listo, yo ya estoy listo para mandar a mi hijo a la escuela. A ver, Ms. Verduzco, ¿quién va a ser el maestro de mi hijo? Y yo ya le doy el nombre. Allí usted va a poder quizás que quedar con esa decisión o tomar la decisión de cambiar si usted quiere que su hijo continúe con su maestro virtualmente o viceversa. Si, su, si usted toma la decisión que quiere que su hijo siga virtualmente, pero luego vemos que el maestro de su hijo es uno de los maestros que va a regresar primero a dar la clase en persona, usted va a poder cambiar su, su decisión. Pero eventualmente vamos a tener una fecha para padres donde ya va a tener que quedar esa decisión allí uh, porque va a ser difícil seguir haciendo cambios. Um, ahora, 
Quiero abrir, quiero abrir la, la, la discusión ahora, preguntas. I would love to now open it up. Let me start, let me start presenting so that I can see you. I appreciate if you're still here. I know this has been a lengthy meeting. Um, now I really just want to open it to questions. Um, I know Mrs. Coca and Dr. Morales have been answering some of the questions in the chat. If not, let me know. Uh, que abrirlo para preguntas. Um, so the, the microphone is open. So Ms. Produsco, Dr. Morales has done a, a, thank you Dr. Morales for taking, uh, for answering most of the questions in the chat. Uh, one question that I don't think we answered was, um, will the PowerPoint be shared in Spanish? The PowerPoint at this time, the answer is, is yes. The PowerPoint at this time is only in English. We are working on translating it. And I'm going to be very transparent, parents. Uh, we have had a, a quite a timeline so that we could be able to present this to you. But we are in the process of translating the presentation so that we can share them with you, both in English and in Spanish, as well as the videos. Um, I have a question. Another question, Ms. Redusco, that a parent asked in Spanish. Um, Necesito más información acerca del plan de los alumnos de CLM. Yes. Sí. Para nuestros, para nuestros estudiantes de, um, de, de educación, en clases de educación especial, también van a tener una fecha para que ellos puedan regresar, al igual que los maestros y los asistentes. Como ustedes saben, tenemos um, asistentes también en el salón que apoyan a nuestros estudiantes. Ahora, esos salones van a tener artículos adicionales para apoyar a nuestros estudiantes con necesidades especiales y el personal como batas, ¿verdad? Quizás batas para el personal que tengan que cambiar pañales a nuestros niños pequeños um, y entrenamiento, porque va a, ser, va a ser diferente de cómo vamos a, a, a trabajar duro para mantener a nuestros niños en, en educación especial también seguros, ¿verdad? Sabemos que quizás van a tener a un poco más retos con el cubreboca. Pero nuevamente, queremos abrirle la puerta a todos nos, nuestros estudiantes. Un plan específico para nuestras clases de, de educación especial, uh, todavía no lo tenemos completo, pero sí se le va a dar uh, esta información a nuestros padres de, de educación especial. The question is for our parents who have our, our students in special, in a special day class, which here at Washington, we have three special day classes in preschool, kinder, and first and second grade. So we will also have a date after spring break so to start welcoming our students uh, who are in special education, as well as our, our teachers and the instructional staff who supports our students with special needs. Those classrooms have been equipped with additional uh, protective, uh, personal protective items such as gowns, um, face shields, uh, so that we, we're going to have, we have staff who needs to change diapers, right, for some of our younger students, as well as um, our students, um, some of our students with special needs will probably have more difficulty leaving their face mask. Um, so this is where our special education team is in the process of getting trained on how they will be supporting our students because we don't want to close, we want to open our doors to all of our students, uh, but we also want to ensure that we have the, the, the right protocols in place. Another question, Ms. Redusco, um, a parent is asking if uh, they can pick up their children at 11.45 after the teacher has finished. Great question. The schedule will be from 8.45 to 3 o'clock. 
And, and, and the reason why we, we need our students here also in the afternoon is because they will be provided with uh, support to on completing their online assignments, as well as they will still be required to uh, participate in asynchronous science, social studies uh, during, the second, during the second half of, of the day. Of course, if you have an emergency and you need to um, pick up your child before three o'clock, you will be able to pick up your child. But the students who come to our in-person learning, uh, the schedule will be 8.45 to three o'clock. La pregunta era, ¿qué si puede, puedo yo recoger a mi hijo a las 11.45 cuando terminen la clase con el maestro? Bueno, El horario es de 8.45 a 3 de la tarde. Si usted decide que quiere a su hijo en, en ese modelo que le enseñamos de dos días, dos días por semana, um, vamos a pedirle que su hijo permanezca con nosotros de 8.45 a 3 de la tarde, ya que eh, la segunda parte del día vamos a apoyar a nuestros estudiantes con los con las tareas en línea, con ciencias sociales, historia, con, um, con también uh, uh, actividades de educación física. Y es importante que estén aquí nuestros niños con nosotros. Pero si usted tiene una emergencia o tiene que recoger a su hijo antes de las tres, usted va a tener esa oportunidad de hacerlo. I know we have a hand. Uh, our parent, uh, Michael Valencia, would you like to unmute yourself? Yes, is, this is only for for right now till the school ends, right? Is that when the school begins again, or is it going to be is, That is correct. That is correct. We, we, we still don't have an established schedule for the fall, for the next school year, but we will. All right. Should definitely be presenting it to the parents. Great okay. question. Uh, la, la pregunta, you're welcome. La pregunta es si estos, estas dos opciones que les, um, que les ofrecimos este horario es, eh, también aplica para el año que viene. Para el año que viene todavía no tenemos establecido las opciones y el horario, pero sí lo tendremos disponible para nuestras familias. Esto lo que les presentamos hoy solamente aplica para el final de este año escolar que viene siendo para el 16 de, de junio. There's another question. What for the for um the the non live days, uh, the asynchronous days? What will the what will the time look like for those days? Yes, for the asynchronous days the teacher will be providing um, asynchronous assignments. So pretty much with asynchronous, there is more flexibility with the pacing. So pretty much that's when your children will have to complete the online work. And the online work will also give the teacher the, uh, the green lights to mark them, abs uh, not absent, present, because they were able to complete the work that they were assigned. So they they won't have to finish the assignments by three o'clock, but they will be required to finish all the assignments that the teacher gives them on the asynchronous days. La pregunta era, ¿cómo va a trabajar cuando mi hijo tenga que hacer los trabajos asincron as as asincrónicos? Que viene siendo cuando el estudiante no va a venir a la escuela en persona. Um, no va a tener, el maestro le va a dar al estudi a los estudiantes trabajo para cada día as asincrónico. Y el estudiante no va a tener que terminar los trabajos para las 3 de la tarde. Uh, se les va a motivar que terminen para las 3 de la tarde, pero sí van a tener que completar todos los trabajos que les dé el maestro, porque va a ser la manera de la cual el maestro va a tomar asistencia para los estudiantes que estén a, aprendiendo de casa durante esos asin días asincrónicos. Great questions. There was a question regarding testing. Uh, I think a parent wanted to know if they are going to do weekly or monthly uh, COVID testings um, when, when students are on campus. COVID testing for the, for the staff or for students? For students. For students. So we can't, we can mandate um, parents to 
take their child to get a test for COVID, we can highly encourage it, but we cannot, um, we cannot make it uh, mandatory. What I can tell you is when a student is sent home to isolate, to, um, to quarantine, there will be a specific timeline before the student can return to school. When that day comes, our health technician, our screening staff will reevaluate the student before the student gets the clearance to enter the campus. La pregunta es si vamos a, a hacer que los estudiantes se tomen exámenes de, de COVID cada semana o mensualmente. Um, actualmente no podemos hacer esto mandatorio donde tenemos que requerir que el padre lleve al hijo a tomarse el examen de COVID-19, pero sí lo vamos a recomendar, sí lo vamos a, 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 a motivar al, al padre que haga eso. Lo que sí les puedo decir es que cuando el estudiante esté en cuarentena, ¿verdad? Um, va a haber una, unas, unos días de, de, de fecha donde el estudiante ya no va a poder venir a la escuela hasta cuando llegue ese día de regreso, nuestra enfermera y nuestro, nuestro equipo de evaluación va a reevaluar al estudiante y ahí ya tomar la decisión si el estudiante okay. está okay. listo para regresar. There's another question, Ms. Rudusco. One parent has her child with Ms. Avala who will, who will be on campus um, the week of the 29th, 30th, and the 31st. She wants to know, um, uh, let me see, I'll read it. My child is with Ms. Avala. I know next week is asynchronous all week. What happens the following week, 29th to the 31st, with my child and the students who are not going back yet? Right. So if your child is with Ms. Avala and you already filled out the survey, your child can actually start coming on Monday, Monday, March 22nd. During the asynchronous, during the asynchronous days, uh, as we know, teachers are not going to be teaching live. But remember, during March 22nd through March 31st, we're partnering up with Think Together. So we can still help our students here on the campus complete their online work. So the same thing with March 29, 30, and 31st. Did your child, if you have a child in Ms. Savala and you, um, you made the decision to send your child already to school, your child will be with Ms. Savala. Ms. Savala will still be teaching the students distance learning, but the few students that come to the campus, Ms. Savala has um, agreed and accepted to keep those students in the classroom with her. Remember, we cannot have more than um, more than 14, but they will be in the classroom all the way until lunchtime. After lunchtime, Think Together will take over in a separate classroom. I hope that answers the question. La pregunta era si mi hijo está con Ms. Savala y mi hijo ya va, ya va a regresar eh, la semana de marzo 22, ¿cómo, cómo va a funcionar? Uh, ¿Va a estar en la clase de Ms. Savala o, o va a estar en otra, en otra clase? Si usted tiene un hijo en la clase de kinder con Ms. Savala, Ms. Savala uh, va a estar presente aquí la siguiente semana hasta el 31. Esos estudiantes de la clase de Mesabala que vengan a la escuela van a estar en la clase con Mesabala mientras que ella también da la clase virtualmente. Va a estar, va a estar recibiendo la, los estudiantes van a estar recibiendo la instrucción directamente de Mesabala hasta la, hasta la hora del almuerzo. Ya después del almuerzo, Think Together va a, van a, va a supervisar a los estudiantes en un salón separado. You know, Ms. Verduzco, um, in regards to the COVID-19 testing, uh, the parent actually wanted both. So the students and the staff, just if they are if they are required to take um, COVID-19 test while they're on this. Yes. So for staff, that is that is correct. I don't have an exact document that shows if the staff will be um, 
required to take a COVID test like on a weekly, on a monthly basis. What I can tell you is if a staff member needs to quarantine or isolate, that is correct. The staff member must show the um, the results, the COVID test uh, results uh, in order to be able to return. Great question. So ahora la pregunta es para el personal si ellos se van a tener que tomar el examen de COVID. La respuesta es sí. Cuando si tienen que irse en cuarentena o, o están en casa, ¿verdad? Uh, porque quizás estuvieron expuestos a alguien más, ellos sí van a tener que demostrar um, el, el resultado del examen antes de, antes de regresar a la escuela en persona. A uh, question in Spanish. Mi hija está con Mr. Nuno. En el survey puse que fuera hybrid, pero me gustaría mandarle este lunes. ¿Qué puedo hacer? Great question. Buena pregunta. Okay. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a good opportunity for me to say this. Esta es buena oportunidad para decir esto. Si usted tiene un hijo en kinder, primero o segundo, y usted quiere que ya su hijo empiece este lunes, uh, recuerde, va a seguir recibiendo instrucción a, you know, en, en línea, pero si usted quiere que su hijo ya regrese este lunes, por favor llame a nuestra oficina. O, o déjenos saber ahorita aquí en el, en el chat que me escoja y Dr. Morales tomen la nota porque le tenemos que mandar un paquete, ¿verdad? Que usted va a tener que llenar. Y ya su hijo va a poder comenzar uh, este, este lunes. Si se quiere esperar hasta después del receso también para, para tomar la decisión, tiene esa oportunidad también. The question is, and, and Mr. Nuño también es un maestro que va a estar ya aquí empezando el lunes. Él fue un maestro voluntario que está listo para empezar y va a hacer lo mismo que Mesabala. Él va a poder atender a sus niños en el salón con él y en la hora del almuerzo, Think Together se llevará a los estudiantes en otra área. The question is, if I have my child with Mr. Nuño, in the survey I put hybrid model. Can I change my mind and send my student uh, to, to school starting this Monday? The answer is yes. This is what we need from you. If you have a child in kinder, first grade, or second grade, and you would like for your child to start this Monday, but you know that your child will still be receiving distance learning instruction, um, you need to let us know, please. Uh, you can either call our office, or you need to just let us in the chat know. Ms. Coca, Dr. Morales can take notes. Um, or stay after the meeting and let me know, Ms. Verduzco, I'm gonna send your, my child to school on Monday because we need to have a list of who's starting on Monday for many reasons. We need to order enough food. We need to make sure that we give that parent a packet. You're gonna have to come to the school and pick up a packet to fill out the emergency card, to fill out the family recommitment letter, all that good stuff. We need that completed before the student enters the school. So I hope that answers the question. Ms. Reduska, there is a question too regarding if parents are able to choose which hybrid they want due to work scheduling um, and also uh, siblings in the same hybrid. Great question, thank you for that, yes. If parents, you will have, um, we are here to accommodate our families and we're going to do our very best to accommodate you. If you, if one schedule works better for you than another, than the other one, like if you want your child to come on Monday and Tuesday to school, um, you, you will be able to, to let us know. You will definitely, and will put your student in that schedule, in that cohort. The same applies if you have more than two children attending Washington Elementary we want to accommodate you and place the siblings in the same cohort, in the same schedule, or vice versa. If you rather have, if, if it works better for you, for your child to come on Thursday and Friday, you would just have to let us know so that we can, um, we can definitely accommodate your needs. Um, Ms. Coca or Dr. Morales, if you can just please put my email in the chat. If you need to contact me directly, please know that email works best. I check my email 24 seven, email works best. You can email me directly and I can answer more specific questions for you. Uh, la pregunta es, ¿qué si, qué si yo, um, 
¿Qué si yo trabajo y si yo quiero que mi hijo regrese a la escuela con el modelo de dos días por, por semana? ¿Puedo yo escoger el horario uh, dependiendo de qué me ayuda a mí? La respuesta es sí. Vamos a hacer lo mejor posible para acomodar, para apoyar a nuestras familias. Si para usted funciona mejor que su hijo venga a la escuela los lunes y los martes, déjenos saber, por favor. O ya sea los jueves y los viernes. Déjenos saber. Esto también aplica para los... Um, para los padres que quizás tengan más de un hijo aquí en Washington, queremos asegurarnos que ponemos a sus hijos en el mismo horario, en el mismo um, uh, uh, cohort, en el mismo grupo. ¿Ok? Claro que sí. Claudia Soltero, yes, Mr. Nuño will have your student this coming up Monday. Only for the first half of the day. And the second half will be with Think Together. But if you haven't talked to anybody in our office staff, uh, please call our office. Talk to Sandra or Leonor. They are confirming the list of the students who are starting on Monday. It is very important that we know um, that we receive that confirmation from you, please. Uh, one uh, parent just wants to clarify regarding Ms. Avala. So if the students are remaining in distance learning next the next week and a half, then the child, the children will still be receiving instruction from Ms. Avala virtually. Absolutely. Yes. From March 22nd all the way to spring break. Actually, all the way through, well, let me just stop at spring break. The Ms. Avala will still provide live instruction to our students via distance learning. After spring break, um, and, and I can already tell you, Ms. Zavala is one of our teachers who will be teaching in person. Um, so if you decide that you want your child to continue receiving virtual instruction, it is, it is likely that they will have a different teacher. If you go for the hybrid model, then Ms. Zavala will teach your child in person two days out of the week. En español, disculpen. Si mi hijo está con Mesabala, pero yo voy a mantener a mi hijo en la escuela, eh, eh, de, del 22 de marzo al 31 de marzo todavía va a recibir instrucción virtual de Mesabala, la respuesta es sí. La respuesta es sí. Mesabala va a seguir dando la instrucción virtual. Um, pero ya después de primavera, yo sé que Mesabala es una de las maestras que va a enseñar en persona. Así que si usted decide que quiere que su hijo siga recibiendo instrucción virtual, Mesabala ya no sería la maestra de su hijo, uh, porque Mesabala solamente ya va a enseñar en persona. Después de Spring Break, ya no va a enseñar virtualmente. I believe there's another question regarding students in distance learning who are uh, participating in a thing together. Uh, it says, will students who are doing distance learning still be able to continue participation in think together? Yes. Yes, think together for now. We, we're not going to have extended hours like before all the way to six o'clock. Our school day will end at, at three o'clock. So let me go back to your question, I'm sorry. Think together, okay, I understand the question now. If your child is receiving support from Think Together virtually right now, that is a good question for Think Together. Ms. Vanessa, are you in the call by any chance? Yes, um, I can oh, definitely great. answer answer the question. Um, so like I was typing on the chat um, for the parent that was asking about things together since um, upon the district's request, our priority right now is for the K through the second group that is returning. Um, so we are gonna be only focusing on those students. Not that, I mean, for us, we would love to continue our distance learning program, but it is um, as of March 20, um, as of Thursday, well, if our student is currently like participating now, um, we are ending distance learning to uh, prioritize our K through second students. So if K through second students are returning to site, um, they will be um, with us doing um, activities. We will be incorporating physical activities, social emotional learning activities, 
And we will also be aligning with the school day to follow all CDC guidelines, meaning the masks have to be on at all times. Um, so as of right now, for third through six, I believe, we will not have any more distance learning um, support in the meantime. I am pushing to try to get um, support from another site to see if we can send students that still need that academic support. But as of right now, it's still a no. Thank you, Ms. Vanessa. La pregunta es, si mi hijo ahorita está recibiendo apoyo de Think Together virtualmente, ¿ese apoyo va a seguir? La respuesta es, uh, ahorita no va a seguir. Uh, después de lunes, Think Together solamente nos va a poder apoyar en persona a los estudiantes que van a empezar a venir a la escuela en persona. Así que si usted mandó a su hijo en persona, definitivamente vamos a tener el apoyo de Team Together hasta las 3 de la tarde. Ya no va a ser hasta las 6 por un, por un tiempo. Another I do see a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Coca. Uh, I, just, uh, I, would... I see a, there's a question about um, materials. Can the kids leave the books in the classroom and just bring uh, the Chromebook back and forth with the earphones? Um, Great so question. Just... Yes, the answer is yes. And and the students that start on Monday, we would need them to bring definitely, and again, we have this in a letter for you, uh, the Chromebook, the headphones, all the materials, they're going to be able to keep them in the desk um, so that they don't have to be uh, taking them back and forth. The only device that they will take back and forth is their Chromebook. And we would need your support in charging the Chromebooks every night to ensure that they have a fully charged Chromebook the next day. After spring break, when we start the group A and the group B schedule, we are working on having two different designated areas in the classroom for group A to uh, store their materials and group B to store their materials since they won't be able to store, store them in the desk because you know the desk will be shared um, from group A to group B. So that's a great question. La pregunta es si, si los estudiantes van a tener que estar trayendo los materiales ida a la escuela y luego a la casa todos los días. No, L los estudiantes que ya empiecen este lunes, si sí, vamos a pedir que traigan sus materiales, sus audífonos, um, todo lo que necesitan para aprender con sus maestros y lo van a poder dejar en el escritorio. Lo único que se van a llevar a casa todos los días y es, los, es el, 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 la computadora uh, para que la pueda cargar, ¿verdad? Les vamos a pedir a los padres que carguen la computadora todas las noches para que esté cargada. Um, ahora, ya después de Spring Break, cuando empecemos a implementar el grupo A y el grupo B, vamos a tener en los salones dos áreas para que el grupo A pueda guardar ahí sus uh, materiales y grupo B pueda guardar sus materiales también, ya que no van a poder guardar sus materiales en el escritorio porque van a estar uh, compartiendo, ¿verdad?, uh, el, el escritorio. All right. Any There's questions? That, yes. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut anyone off. There's a question regarding kinder. So if their child is in kinder and continues on online instruction, um, will she have a substitute teacher for the remainder of the school semester? It's a possibility. Let, let me tell you why. If we have, and I know, I know, I just, you know, I, I need to be transparent with you. If we have, our hope is to have teachers on campus, right? But reality is we might have some of our teachers who have underlying conditions, who will have medical valid excuse and they cannot get vaccinated. And there is a possibility that those teachers will have to remain distance learning. I don't have that list yet. But what I can tell you is that we will let you know which teachers will teach in person, which teachers will teach distance learning. 
So let's say kinder, and I'm just gonna throw it out there. Let's say that we have Mr. Nuno and Ms. Zavala teaching in person, and Ms. Zavalsa is teaching distance learning. Ms. Zavalsa will teach those students distance, distance learning, and Mr. Nuno and Ms. Zavala will teach students in person, but we might have to switch some students around. Some students from Ms. Zavalsa will have to go to Mr. Nuno's roster to teach him in person. Some students from Ms. Zavalsa will have to go to Ms. Zavala's roster to teach him in person, or vice versa. Some students from Ms. Zavala, whose parents want them to remain online, will have to go to Ms. Zavalsa's roster so that they can receive instruction from her. So these are the, these are the kinds of scenarios that we're going to be uh, facing. And our goal is to be as clear with you as possible so that you can make that decision. La, la pregunta es, ¿qué si yo tengo mi hija con Mesa Balsa y, y Mesa Balsa está enseñando clases en persona y yo decido que mi hijo enseñe clase, eh, termine el año con aprendizaje a distancia? Uh, ¿Qué significa eso? ¿Va a tener mi hijo un sustituto? Bueno, hay una probabilidad que sí. Y queremos ser transparente. Todo depende de cómo va a ser el movimiento, cuántos estudiantes van a estar en persona, cuántos estudiantes van a estar virtualmente, cuáles maestros van a estar enseñando en persona, cuáles maestros van a enseñar virtualmente. Uh, por favor, sepan que quizás tendremos algunos maestros que quizás tienen condiciones médicas donde no se pueden vacunar. Y probablemente ellos van a ser los maestros que van a enseñar virtualmente. Ya al tener esta información, es como nosotros vamos a poder organizar nuestros grupos y ser transparente con nuestros padres para que usted sepa quién sería el maestro de su hijo y a la misma vez usted pueda tomar esa decisión final. Hi, Ms. Produsco. This is Thelma. I had a few questions that haven't been answered just yet. Yes. Um, my first question was, how is the school identifying asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic students and staff? I don't think that was really covered in the presentation. Um, and then if, for example, my child were to continue doing distance learning, um, is he still going to be on that same schedule or is his schedule changing to kind of mock the schedule for those students who are participating in person? Because I guess my biggest concern is I keep seeing 8.45 to 11.45, but I know his instruction ends um, till 1.30 most of the days. Correct, and, and distance learning right now, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you, uh, Thelma, great questions. So let me start with question number two. Uh, yes, if you decide that you want your child to remain in distance learning until the end of the school year, he or she will participate in the same schedule that they have now. Uh, the protocol for symptomatic students uh, was shared earlier in the presentation. There is a protocol established by our district that where our staff is being trained to be able to identify those COVID-19 um, uh, like symptoms so that we are able to follow next steps and work in collaboration with our health technician and our district nurse. So there will be symptoms that we will be looking out for and we, ha we have established uh, tracing a contact tracing contact team at Washington Elementary. Who is this team? This is our health technician, our principal, our assistant principal, our library media tech, our secretary, and our attendance assistants. Us six are the COVID contact tracing team. The minute we encounter a situation where there is a possible case, 
we are the ones who will work hard to communicate with the families to trace where was that student what location of the campus was that student in close down that area collaborate with our cleaning staff so that they can disinfect as soon as possible and contact other families of students that might have been exposed to the student um, with COVID-like symptoms or with a COVID-positive test. Las preguntas es, uh, la primera, si yo decido que mi hijo uh, se quede en, en distancia virtual para el resto del año, mi, mi, mi hijo va a seguir el mismo horario que tiene ahorita? La respuesta es sí. El estudiante va a seguir teniendo el mismo horario que tiene ahorita. Ahora, la segunda pregunta es, ¿cuál es el protocolo para poder identificar y los pasos cuando tengamos estudiantes y personal um, que quizás están demostrando síntomas de COVID-19? Uh, sí demostramos el protocolo en la presentación, pero déjenme recordarles, tenemos un protocolo ya establecido. Tenemos también un equipo en la escuela que va a ser responsable de contactar a las familias, de contactar, uh, de identificar los lugares en la escuela donde el estudiante que quizás tiene COVID-19, en donde estuvo el estudiante, qué baño usó oh, para poder cerrar esas áreas y en, inmediatamente nuestro equipo de limpieza pueda desinfectar las áreas donde quizás el estudiante estuvo presente. Uh, ese equipo son las siguientes personas, somos seis en ese equipo. Um, Ms. Borders, nuestra enfermera, Ms. Sandra, nuestra secretaria, Ms. Borders, nuestra asistente de asistencia, Mr. Bit Mitchell, nuestro uh, personal de la biblioteca, Dr. Morales, nuestro asist asistente director, y yo, Ms. Verduzco. Somos seis personas en ese equipo. Another question, Ms. Verduzco, is regarding uniforms. Um, parents are wondering if they need to worry about uniforms, and if so, what color? No, as of as of now, as of now, parents, um, we just want to see our students back. We we just want our students back as safely as possible. It's uniform will be optional until the remaining of the year. If you would like to send your child with a uniform, you are welcome to do so. If right now um, you rather just send them with uh, traditional clothing, um, that is also Ok. Uh, la pregunta es si tenemos que mandar a nuestros hijos con uniforme. Ahorita, al, al, el, como, re, como queda este año, vamos a ser flexibles. Todavía no va a ser mandatorio el, el, um, el uniforme. Ya nos preocupamos de eso el siguiente año. Ahorita lo que queremos es ya darle la bienvenida a nuestros estudiantes, ¿verdad? Lo más pronto posible. Si usted ya quiere mandar a su hijo con uniforme, lo puede hacer. Y si no, nada más les pedimos que nuestros niños vengan vestidos apropiadamente. One of the parents, Ms. Verduzco, was asking about uh, uh, asymptomatic cases. So what would be the protocol for asymptomatic cases? So this is where we would need very good communication with the families because, as you know, it will be challenging to be able to identify if a student is showing asymptomatic symptoms uh, or is asymptomatic. So we would we would just continuously remind our, our parents if someone in the home is sick, even if your child is not showing any symptoms, please call the office, call the teacher. The child cannot be on campus. So it, we would follow the same protocol for symptomatic. We would just need the support and collaboration from our families to, to, to let us know. La pregunta es, ¿qué protocolo vamos a usar para nuestros estudiantes asintónicos? Y, y va a ser un reto a uh, poder ver un estudiante asintónico, ¿verdad? Porque pues no demuestran síntomas. Aquí es donde vamos a necesitar el apoyo de nuestras familias, que si alguien en casa está enfermo, Por favor, déjenos saber inmediatamente para mandar al estudiante a casa, porque hay probabilidad de que el estudiante también tenga el COVID-19. Um, 
y seguiremos el mismo protocolo que tenemos para uh, estudiantes sintomo, sim, simto, symptomatic, sintómicos. Questions, I know, I know it's been a lot and, and I really, I really hope that some of the information was clear. I know that there's still a lot that's not answered at this time and a lot of decisions that we need to um, make in the near future. But do know that at the end of the day, um, I, as, as your principal, Dr. Morales, Mrs. Coca, the staff, uh, you know, we are 110% committed to working hard and making sure that all of our students and all of our staff are safe when being on campus. And we, we hope that we have your support and we just, we just appreciate like everything that you have done with your children at home. It's been a year and our students, you know, deserve that, um, that instruction in person, of course, as soon as it's safe and as soon as you feel that it's safe to send your child to school. We're gonna respect every decision you make. And I'm just happy to say that, that you have options. Um, les queremos dar las gracias. Sé que compartimos mucha información con ustedes. Um, sé que también hay preguntas que todavía no tenemos respuestas claras, pero esa decisión que usted pueda tomar en un futuro la vamos a respetar. Yo le puedo dar mi palabra que como su directora um, y nuestro subdirector, uh, you know, Dr. Morales, Ms. Coca, todo el personal, vamos a, a, a comprometernos al, ciento, al 100% de trabajar duro para poder mantener a todos nuestros estudiantes y personal sanos y seguros de tener estos protocolos, de, de estar visibles en todo momento y, y trabajar en colaboración con nuestras familias para terminar un año exitoso. Ya tenemos más de un año que nuestros niños no están en la escuela. Ya queremos ver a nuestros niños de regreso, pero también vamos a respetar su decisión. There are two more questions or a few more questions. Uh, is there any reason this month the kids will be going every day and after break only two days uh, and in groups? That's the first question. Yes. So we don't start the official group A and group B schedule after uh, until after spring break. So again, we are a pilot school. So our pilot period will be from March 22nd through March 31st. So we want to allow students to be here every day so that we can um, fine tune our protocols, our procedures, and we can be ready for the, the big reopening once more students start uh, returning. La pregunta es, ¿por qué hay diferente horario de marzo 22 al 31 y luego después de, de primavera? Uh, les recuerdo, somos una escuela uh, de las dos escuelas que estamos poniendo en práctica este regreso. Así que de, del 22 al, al 31 de marzo, los estudiantes van a estar aquí todos los días porque nos va a dar la oportunidad de poder implementar y asegurarnos que... Um, um, un segundito, discúlpenme. Un Disculpenme. Um, y, y, y este periodo del marzo 22 al marzo 31 nos va a dar la oportunidad de ver bien nuestros procedimientos, asegurarnos que está todo en su lugar para nuestra apertura, reapertura eh, después de la primavera. There's a question about, uh, it says, when will we be receiving the packet to fill out for the students who are going back on Monday? 
If you can please come to the school site this Friday, we will have them ready. Uh, please come, fill them out. You can leave them on Friday, or you can bring them back with you Monday morning when you drop off your child on the first day of school. In that packet, you're gonna have a letter with more details as to what it is that you need to send your child with. La pregunta es, um, ¿cuándo puedo recoger el paquete para si mi hijo va a comenzar el lunes? Venga este viernes, por favor, a recoger el paquete y necesitamos que lo llene antes del lunes. O si el lunes lo trae con su hijo, vamos a ocupar que esté completamente lleno cuando deje a su hijo en la puerta. Um, y en, la, en, en el paquete tenemos una carta con más detalles de qué necesitamos que mande a su hijo a la escuela. I know I just saw a question, uh, Ms. Ochoa, when will the parents get notified what teachers are going back in person and which ones will remain virtually? Great question, as soon as possible. We're working in collaboration with human resources so that um, they're able to provide us with that list. La pregunta es, ¿cuándo vamos a notificar a los padres de cuáles maestros van a enseñar en persona y cuáles van a enseñar um, en, virtualmente. La respuesta es lo más pronto posible. Estamos trabajando en colaboración con recursos humanos para, um, para que nos den esta lista de cuáles maestros ya van a empezar a regresar y cuáles maestros van a enseñar virtualmente. Hola, Miss Berlusco. Hola. Um, una preguntita, nada más. Tengo la curiosidad. Ah, pongamos que cuando van a regresar los niños, ¿cómo se van a dar cuenta cuando los niños, pongamos, lleven, como por decirle, que estén tosiendo o que tengan gripa? ¿Cómo se van a dar cuenta si van a llevar la mascarilla? Vamos a evaluar físicamente al estudiante, Estrellita. Te repito, hacer esas preguntas a los padres. Y si sí, sí vemos que el estudiante verdad está tosiendo o tiene temperatura uh, o si el, el padre dice, bueno, sí vomitó esta mañana, esas son algunas de las señales que vamos a tener que mandar al estudiante de, de regreso a la, a, la a la casa. The question is, how will we um, determine if a student, you know, is, is showing that he or she is ill? The student's going to be wearing a face mask. Uh, when you screen them. So this is where our screening protocol will go into place. We'll ask the student um, questions, the parent questions. We, we will be taking the student's temperature. But if we do, any, if we do see any signs of the student being sick, um, the, the, the coughing, or maybe the parent does say, yeah, this morning did, he did vomit, um, we will kindly ask the student to go home. The question in the chat, in Spanish, después del descanso y después de estar con el nuevo maestro, ¿se puede cambiar la decisión, sí o no? Sí. Sí. Después del descanso, cualquier opción que usted escoja y luego descubre que quizás, eh, ¿verdad?, cuál va a ser el maestro de su hijo, va a tener un periodo donde va a poder cambiar su decisión. Pero ya eventualmente si vamos a tener una fecha donde ya vamos a necesitar que los padres um, se queden con esa decisión porque vamos a tener que tener nuestros grupos ya estables. Uh, the question is, after spring break, will I have an opportunity to change my decision um, if my child is receiving virtual instruction or if I want my child to go to in-person learning? The answer is yes. We're going to have a grace period to give parents an opportunity to see who their child's teacher will be um, and decide what model or option you want to go for. But eventually, we will have a cutoff, cutoff date um, so that we can just um, keep now our two models in place and have those stable cohorts learning on campus. Let's all take a deep breath. <laughs> Tomar un, un respiro profundo. Um, wow, this has been great. 
right? One of our longest parent meeting, but it was definitely needed and necessary. Um, we'll share the recording of this meeting as well in case you want to drink your coffee on the weekend and replay it. You will have an opportunity to do so. Um, at, at this time, um, just uh, I'll stay in here for a little bit. You can email me, email Dr. Morales, Ms. Colca, call our office. Any questions that you have, we will do our best to answer them as quickly and effectively as possible. We appreciate you parents. We appreciate our partnership. And just, just thank you for being here today and for being present. Uh, nuevamente, muchas gracias. Vamos a compartir esta junta, la, la grabamos. Vamos a compartirla con todos. Um, ha sido una de las juntas más largas, ¿verdad? Que hemos tenido, pero muy necesaria. Y apreciamos nuestra colaboración con ustedes. Los apreciamos a ustedes. Somos un gran equipo. Y cualquier pregunta que tenga, preocupación, ya saben, pueden mandarme un email o a Mescoca, a Dr. Morales, llamar a nuestra oficina. Uh, y estamos aquí para servirles y contestar cualquier pregunta que tengan. Um, mis verdes, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Tenía una pregunta. Tengo una pregunta. Este, cuando los niños se crecen a la escuela, está como en esta semana que viene, ¿Cuántos niños van a ver en el salón? Sí, uh, el, el cap, el máximo va a ser 14, no más de 14. Y esto es para el resto del año. No vamos a, okay. tener, no vamos a tener más de 14 estudiantes en un salón. Ok, gracias. Esa era mi pregunta. De, de nada, de nada. The, the question, the question is, is, how many... How many How many, How many students, students will be, um, um, sorry, I, I hear a little, bit, a of little bit of feedback. Sí, disculpen, una pregunta. Oh, oh uh, uh, un segundo, uh, 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 déjame nada más traducir. Okay. Gracias. Uh, just, just what the parents said, uh, what will be the cap, right? How many students will be in the classroom? So from now until the remaining of the school year, no more than 14 students in a classroom. That will be the cap. Uh, Dale, Alicia. Sí, mi pregunta es, por ejemplo, los maestros para los, los grados, como los más grandes, que van a volver este, regresando de vacaciones de Pascua. Los maestros que regresen a la escuela y los que se queden en línea, ¿van a ser maestros sustitutos o van a ser de los mismos maestros que están ahí en la escuela? Es, la, es mi duda que tengo. Sí, buena pregunta. Sí, buena pregunta. Todo, todo, a ver, vamos. Todo va, todo va ¿te puedes te poner en la lista para, para que no se oye? Eh, gracias. Sorry, se oye un eco. Um, sí, todo va a depender nuevamente en la necesidad de estudiantes. ¿Cuál es estu ¿Cuántos estudiantes van a estar en persona y cuántos van a estar en distancia, en virtual? Uh, también va a depender en cuáles maestros van a venir, ya tienen la luz verde de regresar en persona y los maestros que quizás por alguna condición médica o de salud uh, van a tener que, que hacerlo virtual. Uh, si es necesario y necesitamos que contratar a sustituto para que dé una clase virtual, vamos a tener que tomar ese paso. Todo depende nuevamente en cómo vamos a organizar nuestros grupos virtual y en persona. The question is, my child is in upper grades. When we return after spring break and my child is, uh, continues virtually until the end of the year, will there be a chance that my child will be taught by a substitute teacher? Uh, there is a chance. There is a chance. And I go back to, it all depends on the, on the, um, the, the, the student needs. How many students will be in person? How many students will learn virtually? Um, and also which teachers will have the clearance to come and teach in person? And which teachers for any health or medical reasons uh, will be teaching distance learning? That's when we're able to, we'll be able to organize our 
our groups and our rosters and also the staffing. Hi, I have a question. Yes, go um, ahead. If the, for my child to return for Monday, it's already full for the teacher. Can she come back spring break with the same teacher if he stays in person? That is correct. Yes. The answer is yes. If we happen to have full rosters by this Monday for kinder first and second, we will put your child on a wait list. But definitely after spring break, when we start opening more classrooms, you will have a, a space. We will welcome all students back. That's the reason why we'll, we'll have the group A and the group B schedule. Um, so that is correct. You, you'll be able to return after spring break. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. La pregunta es si quiero ya regresar a mi hijo esta semana que viene, pero ya se pone lleno. Uh, ¿Puede regresar mi hijo a, a, a instrucción en persona después de la primavera? La, la respuesta es sí. Si sí, ahorita se nos llenan nuestros salones de marzo 22 a marzo 31, vamos a poner a nuestros niños en una lista de espera, pero ya van a poder empezar con el nuevo horario uh, después de primavera. Bueno, mis verduzco, este, así como enfada. No, este, no, no, no. Por no, ejemplo, no. Eh, lo que tengo mucho miedo de los niños, yo ahorita, pues, yo soy sincera, yo ahorita, uh, yo no llené el formulario de que la mía regrese, porque siento todavía miedo. Pero mi miedo es cuando llegue a regresar y mi miedo es para los que van a regresar, que sean los papás conscientes y que sean responsables, que si ven cualquier mínimo síntoma de sus hijos, que no los manden. Porque sí va a haber uno que otro irresponsable que los va a mandar a sabiendas. Ah, trae poquita como calentura, o tuvo ayer calentura, pero hoy no la tuvo, o trae un mini resfriado, no que sean conscientes que los niños, cualquier síntoma que tengan, que no vayan a clases, no hay necesidad que asistan, que se queden en línea ese día que se sientan mal. Porque Gracias por ese comentario. Sea, porque realmente no creo que como los van a separar, que dice usted que son 14, pero como son los 14 y los vayan a sentar por separados, no pienso que vaya a ser que el acrílico que les pongan o el plástico, como lo vayan a conocer, que esté suficientemente grande como para un destornudo que no se vaya a esparcir. Porque me imagino que han de haber querido poner los acrílicos del tamaño como en las oficinas, que solamente es pequeñito para la cara, pero no te está cubriendo como parte de los lados del cuerpo. Porque al estornudar, no muchas veces uno estornuda de frente, sino estornuda de lado. Y no sé, por ejemplo, en los salones también si van a poner algo, o algún extractor que esté moviendo el el aire que se esté respirando por dentro para que se esté sacando ese, esa misma respiración que esté quedando en el salón encerrado. Gracias, Gracias Alicia. Alicia. Um, um, sí, definitivamente por eso tenemos los nuevos filtros, ¿verdad? Que van a estar en su lugar en, en los salones y, y va a tomar mucha enseñanza a nuestros estudiantes que se pongan el cubreboca apropiadamente Uh, vamos a necesitar que los padres colaboren, ¿verdad? De recordarle a sus hijos que, que, que se laven las manos regularmente, que se pongan el cubreboca, que mantengan su distancia. Y sí, que no manden a sus hijos a la escuela si ven que sus hijos no se sienten bien. Uh, Miss, Miss Alicia just shared a comment with all of us. Um, just really, she's definitely, you know, worried about sending her child to school. Um, even though we're, we're gonna have systems in place, she shared that as parents, we need to ensure that we really don't send our children to school if they are not feeling well, if we see any symptoms related to, to COVID. And, and also when the children are in school, um, you know, really teaching them how to wear the mask properly and how to keep that distance and, and washing our hands regularly. 
um, it, it was just a common for all of us to really work together so that we can keep everyone safe. Okay, Washington families, <laughs> familias. We are going to, at this time, we're gonna prepare to close our meeting. Um, you are welcome to join us again at five o'clock. Uh, if you just want to hear the information all over again, I know it takes time to, to process everything. Uh, please invite other parents who weren't able to join. And at this time, thank you again. We'll be sharing with you the presentation in English and in Spanish. And we will also um, share the videos with you in English and in Spanish. We'll be sharing them via our social media and our in your child's Google Classroom and in our school website. So at this time, thank you so much. We hope we were able to answer all, if not most of your questions. If not, please email us, uh, contact us, and, and thank you. Uh, en este momento vamos a cerrar la junta. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Recuerde, si quiere volver a escuchar la información, acompáñenos a las 5 de la tarde o, o comparta la información con otras padres que nos acompañen. Agradecemos su tiempo. Esperemos que hayamos podido contestar todas sus preguntas o la mayoría de sus preguntas. Y, y si no, contáctenos, por favor. Estamos aquí para servirles y que tengan una, un, un lindo resto del día. Okay. Thank you so much. And at this time, I will stop recording. Vamos allá a dejar de grabar.